The last section of the blood chapter is going to concentrate on blood typing and consider issues that have to do with transfusion of blood from one person to another. Blood typing is a consideration of genetic factors that determine what marks cells in our body as part of our body and how sharing tissues between two people, as in a blood transfusion, brings the peculiarities of that system to light. There are two aspects to blood typing. The first one is called the ABO blood typing system. It's based on a single gene family called ABO, which has three variants or alleles. The A allele is a gene that provides instructions to make a protein called the A antigen. The B allele is instructions to make a protein called the B antigen. And the O allele is a version of the gene that does not successfully make any protein. What's happening here is one of the more involved aspects of heredity called codominance. The A allele and the B allele are both dominant and the O allele is recessive. A dominant gene is usually a functional gene that makes some sort of protein which confers a characteristic or trait onto its bearer. In codominance, it's possible to have a few different dominant phenotypes. You can have type A blood, type B blood, or type AB blood. Type A blood comes from getting an A allele from one parent and a B allele from the other parent, or an A allele from one parent and the O allele from the other parent. Being recessive, the O allele doesn't express itself, and so the phenotype the trait comes from just having that one copy of the A allele. The same things for type B. You can get two copies of the B allele, or you can get one copy of the B allele and one copy of the recessive allele to result in the type B blood. Type AB blood is when you get the A allele from one parent and the B allele from the other parent. And so you have both of those traits, so to speak. Both antigens are made in the body. And then the recessive trait, type O, is when you get the O allele from both parents. And so you have absolutely no functional ABO alleles to make any protein. And it's the lack of those proteins that results in the recessive trait. The word antigen is probably something you haven't heard before, and the meaning of antigen is really something that generates an antibody response, which is getting a little, a little ahead of the story here today. But really all it is is a protein that's expressed on the surface of a cell, and in this case specifically the red blood cell. So in the picture from the book, these antigens are ex depicted as different shaped things sticking off the surface of the cell. So the A antigen is this round lollipop looking thing. The B antigen is the diamond shaped thing sticking off on a stick. So that's all you would see on the surface of a type A blood cell or all that you'd see on the surface of a type B blood cell. A type AB blood cell would show both and a type O blood cell would show neither. Looking at the entire table here, here we see um, <clears throat> a few different aspects of what's going on here. Uh, the red blood cells are depicted with those antigens on them. Uh, then the antigens are depicted by themselves in the third row. And the blood types that are compatible with them is, uh, are depicted in the bottom. We'll talk about compatible blood types and transfusions in a little while. Also, the second row in this table is showing the presence of antibodies in the plasma. Now, somebody with type A blood will have 
antibodies against the B antigen. And somebody with type B blood will have antibodies against the A antigen. Somebody with type AB blood will have neither antibody, and somebody with type O blood would have both antibodies. Now, antibodies are going to recognize particular antigens or particular proteins on the surface of cells or other potentially pathogenic material. So somebody with type A blood has an antibody against type B blood to recognize that as foreign to their body. And the same for type B blood having the antibody against A. Some of type AB blood has neither of those antibodies because their blood has both antigens on it, and type A blood or type B blood would be compatible with theirs. Type O blood having no antigens will result in having both types of antibodies. Now really what's at the core of this is the fact that the antibody population in your body is established early in life but after birth, in the six months or couple of years that somebody's first alive, the antibodies are, are determined. Now, somebody's born theoretically with an infinite number of types of antibodies, and a cell type called a lymphocyte will make antibodies. In that first six months to a couple of years of life, the lymphocytes are tested to be sure that they don't react with things that are supposed to be in your body. You don't want your immune system to say, hey, we don't want those red blood cells, or hey, we don't want those muscle cells, or those neurons, or whatever. So your immune system has to learn what is yours and what's not, and that's what these antigens are about. Everybody makes the anti-A and anti-B antibodies, but type A blood people get rid of the lymphocytes that make the antibody against the A antigen before it can ever cause any kind of autoimmune reaction. And the same with type B, that type B blood people get rid of the lymphocytes that make the antibodies against the B antigen so that they don't have any reaction there. And then with type AB, those people get rid of both types of antibodies because either one would react with their blood. And type O people get rid of neither of the antibodies because neither one's going to cause an autoimmune reaction. Somebody with type AB blood has antibodies, just not those two specific ones that recognize the A or B antigen. It seems unusual to have a system that works this way, but it sets us up for being able to recognize any potential pathogenic intruder to our body without knowing in advance what those would be because there's no way that we know what's out there that can get into our body and cause disease. So our immune system is set up to be prepared for virtually anything that can get in. Now there are upper limits to realistic numbers here. So theoretically we have an infinite number of antibodies, but realistically there are some things that we don't make antibodies to. This is the result of having particular blood types. We would react against other types of blood. And with transfusions, it's possible to share tissues between people, but you have to pay attention to what might cross-react. Now, for the whole of human history, transfusions or sharing tissues between people has been pretty unknown. It's, not, it's only in the very recent past that medical science has made that possible. Now, by recent past, I'm talking about you know, 50 to 100 years, I don't know the exact date when transfusions started, but it's definitely nowhere near the hundreds of thousands to millions of years, or really the entire existence of organisms, that tissue just wasn't shared. If somebody, you know, 100,000 years ago was exposed to another person's blood, there was something seriously wrong, and the immune system should fight off whatever's happening, because it would suggest a potential pathogenic situation. But nowadays with medical science. There's another aspect to blood typing, which is blood types that are positive or negative, and that's based on a different gene product called the RH factor. Now RH is an abbreviation from rhesus monkey or rhesus macaque, which is a laboratory animal that was used originally describing this factor. Now this is a bit more straightforward genetic situation. There's two alleles, the Rh positive and the Rh negative allele. Uh, the positive allele is dominant and makes the Rh antigen. The Rh negative allele is recessive and it doesn't make a protein. If you have at least one copy of the Rh positive allele, you have 
the positive blood type. You have to have two copies, one from either parent, of the Rh negative allele to have a negative blood type. To determine blood type, a test is run just exposing the blood to antibodies against the various antigens that we're talking about here. So what we see here is an image that might represent uh, three drops of blood on a microscope slide, and each drop of blood is exposed to a different antibody. When there's a reaction, we see clumping of the red blood cells, or agglutination. And so here we see a reaction with the antibody against the A antigen, but no reaction with the antibody against the B antigen, meaning that this is type A blood, and then a reaction to the antibody against the Rh factor, here called the anti-D antibody. So this would be A positive blood. This is a screen capture of a game that's on the Nobel Prize website for blood typing. I'll share the link to that with you in a sec. But it's a game where you can see what tra blood typing and tra transfusions have to do. There are three patients that you have to assess, discover what their blood type is by testing it, and then give them transfusions. Now, the syringe and the three vials on the right side of the picture represent that testing, which I've already done at the point I've captured the screen here. And so by reacting her blood with the antibody against the A antigen and the antibody against the B antigen and the antibody against the Rh factor antigen, we see that she has AB negative blood. There's a reaction for A, there's a reaction for B, but there's no reaction for the Rh factor. Having that, we would assume that she also possesses no antibody against A or an antibody against B, but she might possess an antibody against the Rh factor. And so we want to go to give her a transfusion. Now down at the bottom there are eight units of blood represented of the eight different major blood types that we see there. And so we can choose one to give to her. Occurring at the same time as a platelet plug formation really is the coagulation, which is the formation of a protein mesh that we call the clot. And it ends up incorporating the platelets as well as red blood cells into it and becomes a more permanent cover to a site of blood loss, allowing the tissues to heal up around it. This figure just demonstrates the prevalence of the different blood types across four ethnic groups within the population of the United States. As you can see, A positive and O positive are by far the most numerous types. Um, B positive is the next one, basically, especially for African American and Asian Americans. Um, the negative blood types across the board are pretty rare. As I was talking about that patient in the game with the negative blood type, I said that she couldn't get the positive blood type in transfusion because she may be sensitive to it. Actually, people with a negative blood type don't necessarily make antibodies against the Rh factor unless they're sensitized to it. Now, one common place where that sensitization takes place is in gestation. If a mother with a negative blood type is gestating a baby with a positive blood type, she can become sensitized to it. Now, the reason why she would have a baby with a positive blood type is if her spouse, the father of the child, has a positive blood type also. And he can pass on the gene for the positive blood type even though the mother doesn't have it and isn't going to pass that on. Now, it's possible for a little bit of fetal blood to mix with the maternal blood across the um, placenta. And when that happens during the first gestation, the first exposure, it might start to sensitize the mother to that blood type, but it's unlikely to cause problems during that gestation. A second exposure to an Rh-positive fetus is likely to happen in a second 
gestation, a second birth, uh, child. And without a treatment against that sensation, which is fairly common these days, uh, the mother might reject the fetus. It might uh, not come to term. She'd have a miscarriage because of that sort of relationship. That's very uncommon these days because any woman who has a negative blood type that gives birth to a positive blood type child will automatically be treated during gestation to keep that kind of exposure from sensitizing her. This is a link to the Nobel Prize website for blood typing. Um, there's a link to the blood typing game, which I have a couple of uh, screen captures from that I just talked about. Now, actually, that's the old version of the game, and you can get to that version of the game by going to the bottom of this page that's in the link. Uh, there's a newer version that's a little bit um, <clears throat> more interesting. It's coding, and it can randomly giving you, give you any of the blood types in your patients. Uh, the patient that I show you here uh, is the first patient in the old version of the game, and she always has AB negative type blood. But uh, if you'd like to explore the website, there's a little article that talks about what's going on, which I think you can see after playing the uh, new blood typing game. Uh, you're welcome to look into that. Consider this question. Um, when you feel that you've reached an answer, hit the next button to go into the next slide, which will reveal the correct answer. The type of cell that makes antibodies is a type of white blood cell called the lymphocyte. Um, there's actually multiple types of lymphocytes. The one that makes antibodies is called a B lymphocyte. Um, I left that particular aspect of it out when I was talking about it earlier because I was talking about the anti-A antibody and the anti-B antibody. So to throw in B lymphocyte with that would have been possibly confusing, but in fact it is the B lymphocyte. And I made it answer choice B here, kind of reflect that also. We'll talk about lymphocytes and antibodies in the immune system chapter material.